watches this alcohol ink piece goes to the next level with a little bit of resin and a little bit of bling. I show how subtle details can really help your piece out. Hang on. Hey everyone, I thought I'd talk you through a flood coat. I have created this piece, which you guys are probably familiar with, for the winner of my giveaway. And I decided to mount it to one of my cradle boards. And I definitely sealed the uh, alcohol ink project first. Actually, I think I gave it a couple of sprays. Anyway, and then as far as the mounting onto the cradle boards that I use, I have a spray of photo mount and what you do is you spray the back of your piece of artwork or project and then you spray the board in which you're about to adhere it to. You let them dry and then very carefully from one end to the other gently put them together and kind of like you know uh, go from left to right and very softly lay it down on top of each other and push out the bubbles. So that's happened there and then I'll flip over the whole thing, trim it out on a, um, a self, it, kind of a, one of the self-healing boards and using an X-Acto blade that gives me a nice clean edge. So I wanted to take a definite next step and using resin to add that little extra layer, bring the alcohol ink uh, kind of, you know, I always think it makes it come alive. So I am definitely using stone coat, art coat for that purpose. And I'm also going to add a little bit of glitter, bling it, in fact, and a little bit of silver powder to the mix. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to talk you through the process here. So I've got a nice healthy layer of resin going down on the board. I've smoothed it out. I go diagonally on both directions as well as hitting the sides, bring it out to the sides, and then I completely smooth it out with the hands. I also hit the very side edges of the canvas. This allows the sides to look finished as well as um, puts a little resin on the edges of the paper. So, and I hit it with a heat gun just to get rid of some air bubbles. I'm going to def definitely check it out from the edge. Um, I always recommend looking at it from kind of an angle so that way you can see the reflection on the surface. It tells you several things in, in one glance. It tells you if you've got anything in the surface area, dust, debris, particles. But it, more importantly, I can tell you if you've got a thin spot or an area that doesn't have resin in it at all, which will look like a pit. And in this case, I kind of thinned it out too much in the middle, and it was giving me that look of where it could throw several pits in the middle. And that's a common occurrence if your resin is too thin of a layer. You'll, you'll get a, a couple pits that will appear. In other words, it pulls away from the, that spot. So I've added a little extra resin there just to make sure it has a nice coat on there because I'm going to add some thin ribbons of an interference powder in there and a little bit of a metallic. Uh, it's a silver, I don't remember the number, I think it's either 006 or 007, I don't know, it's one of the, the colors from Color Obsession that's a silver and it lays on the surface. And I thought the silver would be nice with this. But this is the blingit that I'm adding right now. And it's uh, the Violet Blingit by Color Art. And it's an interference powder. And I thought that would add a nice little light shift to it. Like uh, if you were looking at it from different angles, you could see the particles. But not something that truly really takes away from the piece. So I've laid in some lines. I'm heating it up gently, and then I'm going to go and bring the heat in closer to kind of fan out those lines. So that way it kind of blends more into the background. It's not an obvious, hey, there's a nice strong line here. Um, and it take, I didn't want it to take away from the piece. I wanted to add to the piece.
So I'm gonna add some silver in here, I believe. Let's see if I'm fibbing. Hopefully not. Nope, adding more clear. <laughs> Must see in the lowest spot. I decided to add more bling it into the corners. Because that was a good area where you could definitely add a lot more sparkle without interfering with the overall image. A little bit of heat to flare it out again. And then it's on to the silver. Now here I start the lines, if you notice, off the canvas and then bring the lines onto it. That is if the lines behave. And then a lot of times I will go through, if I'm just doing simple lines like this, I will use either a, a popsicle stick or a stick of some sort or my finger to blend it into the resin just a little bit to get rid of the drawn lines type of look to it. Another thing you could do is you can add a little bit of heat to it and it'll flare out the silver dust. So I wanted to add just a little accent, not a lot, but I think you get the idea. adds kind of to the magic. Alright, gonna probably bring you in somewhat soon. Nope, still fiddling with it. Checking for dust and hair particles. I believe that there was one in here. And I use a bamboo skewer for getting rid of hair particles. It's easy to because it has a nice long sharp point. And you could just scoop it out of there. You can throw the jalapeno one. Some people like to use tweezers. Probably going to do one more hit of the heat gun and get rid of any air bubbles and on to a close up. Most challenging things about close ups is just getting things to focus. And see how you get a little bit of shimmer dust in there? Just enough to add a little bit of extra into the piece, and that's what I want. Alright, guys. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, but definitely hit the bell. And see you soon. Later.